today I am here with uh, a bunch of other Cubans and we are uh, peacefully gathering in solidarity with the Cuban people. Uh, right now there's a humanitarian crisis in Cuba where the people have finally risen and taken to the streets after 60 odd, 60 -odd years of regime um, and they are asking for their basic human rights to be um, taken into consideration by the Cuban government. So we are here standing with people. We are not siding with any one political side, we are standing with you, which is, I think, one of the most important things, and people keep missing the point, they keep missing the fact that they have to listen to the people, so that's why we're here today. Can I just ask, uh, what inspired you to to uh, visit Calvin Grove today? Just, yeah. At the art gallery, so there's two pictures, so when I was at uni, I used to come here for solace, and I used to look at... Um, a picture called Lady in a Red Hat by William Strang and obviously the Dali um, Christ. What inspired you to move to Glasgow? Um, a very unique course that they had to offer, uh, which I thought was ideal for me to what, what is the, Do you mind if I ask what the course is? Oh yeah, it's called Music Industries. What, would you, what did you want to do as a child? <laughs> Don't remember, I'm assuming lawyer I think. It's always been pretty set. Of, of your of your parents got that background? Absolutely not, they did geology. As a child, probably uh, be a home economics teacher because that was my favourite teacher. Um, and then I came and studied drama here. Uh, I am still at school, but I am working at the GFT, which is a pretty big place here. It's the Glasgow Film Theatre. It's like an art house kind of thing. Yeah, so um, I'm originally from Cuba myself. Uh, I've lived there the first half of my life and I've moved here to Glasgow for the second half. So right now, I mean, this has been going on for many, many years and something has sparked up in the Cuban people with COVID and everything that's been happening. The situation has worsened drastically um, in terms of like supplies, in terms of their freedom of speech. Everything has just crashed onto the ground, if that makes sense. And it just came about so naturally. This is a, a natural and organic thing that started happening in Cuba. People started communicating and organizing via the internet. Um, and everyone just took to the streets to let their voices be heard and you know, tell the government, hey, we want freedom from you. Um, so that's kind of what's been, what's been happening recently. Which musicians inspire you? Some of the greats, uh, Oscar Peterson, Charlie Parker, uh, Miles Davis, uh, Paul Desmond, people like that. Are you part of a sort of jazz group of sorts? Uh, at the time being, no, because I haven't been able to make any contact since I've been here. Uh, so, I briefly worked in Italy uh, in a theatre company, I worked in Mississippi and Louisiana um, promoting the Northwest as a tourist place, I travelled Canada, America, Australia, Lapland, most of Europe. What's, uh, what, what's been the most, uh, which place do you enjoy the most? It depends really, lots of different enjoyment for different reasons. So New Orleans is about losing your soul and your liver. Uh, Vancouver is one of the nicest places I've been to, um, but I'll always come back to Manchester. Do you think um, outside of Manchester, where do you think people were the, the nicest? So I like... Um, the uh, Yorkshire people, because I'm married to one, and uh, I love Whitby. Go to Whitby a lot as well. Um, the Northerners of England are friendly. The Glaswegians are friendly. But you know what? It's not. It's not dictated by where you live. It's who you are. When you moved from uh, Cyprus to Coventry or Cyprus to the UK generally, what would you say was the biggest culture shock you found? Um, I guess uh, sarcasm. <laughs> uh, the British are very sarcastic in general. Uh, where I'm from, everybody's very straightforward. 
you have a problem with me, you'll say it straight to my face, you know. You'll, you'll tell people, for example, to go fuck themselves. But uh, here everything is just kind of done behind closed doors, which I'm really not used to. Uh, yeah, I guess the humor sort of is intertwined in that sort of uh, cultural norm as well. Do you, do you think, do you find it in any way frustrating at times or? Absolutely, yeah, absolutely. What do you miss about Paris? The streets, the architecture. How was life in Cuba when you were there? there you were, uh, presumably you were born there, is that yes, right? Yes, I was born there, yeah. Um, how, how was life in Cuba at that time? And uh, what's, your, what's your earliest memories around that time? I mean, I remember everything up to like right up to when I left. Uh, as a child, you perhaps I perhaps didn't notice as much of the struggle as perhaps I would have now that I'm an, an, I'm an adult. But you know, through talking with my mother and uh, many of my family that are still back there um, and friends, like I, I can see the struggle that they have to to go, to go through every day. They line up for hours. Uh, outside of the supermarket, just waiting for to be able to go in to buy food, and then the shelves are absolutely empty or just stocked with the one same thing. So it's um, it's quite heartbreaking to see that they are having to go through this, and they've been protesting since uh, July 11 as well. So this is all very very recent, and there's not been anything like this in the past 62 years. Where else have you lived other than uh, Cyprus and UK? Lived. Or even visited, I guess. I've visited quite a few places, but um, I think Cyprus and the UK. I spent around two years of my life in Lebanon, but I would only travel once a year growing up because my mother is from Lebanon. So I guess I know Lebanon quite well, but I've never lived there for a period of time. Was it, was it Beirut? Um, it was close to there. How, how did you find. Uh, Lebanon generally, did you enjoy it? Yeah, I love the people, um, the government's a mess. <laughs> yeah, disaster. <laughs> but uh, yeah, the people are amazing. It's, it's a really interesting place. One of my cousins described it as um, a country with such high rate of poverty, with extremely high educated people, and that sort of mix sort of breeds like this very unique culture that you don't really get in other places. Um, how would you say that manifests itself to the average person on the street? Like what would you, how would you, how would you identify Lebanon on the street? Uh, I know that's quite a difficult sort of question but maybe I'm not even wording it very well no, no, but no, hopefully I you know what I mean. And I have an answer for that as well. Um, I feel the people are amazing because no matter what, and they've been going through shit for the past 20 years, whether it's wars or uh, what's it called? terrorist groups or um, problems with the West, or now their electricity issues, and their economy has gone to, to shit basically. The people still know how to look up and enjoy their life, and have a good time, go out. You know? yeah, that's the most amazing thing. What's the biggest culture shock you've had? Uh, coming to university in Glasgow and thinking, having never been before, and the, the taxi coming around the corner, and I saw that big building and absolutely got so scared and overwhelmed by it. And then realising that I'd come to university in a different country, never mind a different part of Britain. <laughs> Well, something that's gradually become acceptable that you're on that makes you unhappy. Racism is back on the rise. I think that would be one one thing. Do you feel in France generally, or maybe Paris specifically, and in the UK, there's a difference in racism? Uh, it's more covert back home. It's more hidden. The racial statistics that you have uh, for university, employment, and NHS, we don't have them. You're not allowed to ask someone what their ethnicity is. So people don't know, so they just assume, and it doesn't make it much better. Can I ask, um, what prompted you to leave Cuba? 
Well, I was a young girl, like I said. My mom married a Glaswegian guy. They fell in love and they got married and then they came here, but they're not, it's not the only story or the only way people leave Cuba. People try and leave Cuba in, in whatever way they can sometimes because they're trying to get away from that oppression from the government, from the lack of um, freedom that they have. Uh, some of them try to leave on like made up boats just to try and cross the, through the waters to go to Miami in hopes of something better. I feel like there's this sort of a, a growing narcissism that exists with all people and starting to manifest more and more in the younger generations I feel and that sort of really influences politics nowadays because the leftists of today are not the leftists of 20 years ago per se. Um, everybody's uh, neoliberal and now you have a whole new sort of set of right-wing groups as well that are coming out, especially in like uh, Western countries like the US and, and England per se. So politics is just like a right mess. I, I, I really don't see how anything's going to move forward positively. And, it's such a, I feel like I can just scratch the surface and can't really get into this because there's just so much to say about everything. Out of all the what? places that you've been, where do you think uh, the UK could really learn a lesson from? California. Well, in, in what respect? Oh, well, we need their weather, but kindness, generosity, great food, great views, some things that we can't change, but I don't think we celebrate this country enough. Do you think, um, it's funny because in my opinion, in my completely distorted opinion, um, California and the people of California are known to be quite false. Um, do you, was that was that perspective challenged when you were there? Absolutely, I thought the same, I had no inclination to go. Um, but when I got there, I absolutely fell in love with the place. It, yeah, it shocked me. How do you feel about the the new the new wave of uh, left wing politics? Um, I feel uh, there's a lot of smart people and a lot of stupid people, and uh, they're kind of just put into the same mix. And uh, yeah. Just creates a disaster. Because, uh, for example, the alt right is now a thing which wasn't, you know, nobody had ever heard of it before, and it's just based on the pushback from all this extreme, almost fascist ideology from leftism. Which I think fascist is a bit of a stretch. It's just when people feel so alienated from uh, a lot of uh, left wing ideology right now, which is problematic in my mind. The meaning of life. I think that it's a different answer to everyone that you ask, obviously. And for me personally, right now, doing something that makes you not the happiest but comfortable, being okay with what you do, I guess. Um, I don't think that's a concept that's definable. It's kind of like asking the existential question what why is, which is not something that is fathomable or something that has a prospect or a line of reasoning. Um, I think it's sort of just based on a construct that we invent just like society in itself. It's a kind of nihilistic approach to things, but uh, yeah, the meaning of life is a very abstract question. It's all about being present and being true to yourself in this moment and in doing that you'll be naturally in tune with your, everyone around you and your environment. So for me right now it's about being present, sharing down with the dictatorship, the Cuban dictatorship. So yeah, be present with yourself, with the people around you, with the things that you're experiencing and be honest, be open to your experiences and be free to 
express them or be, be free to, uh, to yourself, if that makes sense. Allow yourself to be free from within. Addiction? Absolutely. I currently suffer from cigarette smoking and uh, caffeine in this period of time because of uh, my dissertation. It's too soon. Uh, overthinking. I think a lot of people would probably relate to that as well. Is, is that something that... I mean, it's obviously something you recognise in yourself. So, is there, is, uh, what have you done to to combat that? Well, I'm a women's life coach as well. This is what I this is partially what I do uh, as a career and in my own way of living. Um, and it kind of links back to my meaning of life of being present, of being slow, and being attentive to yourself. The minute you have caught myself doing it, I try to break that cycle. It's all about breaking that cycle in whatever way you can in a healthy way, not trying to uh, distract yourself with drugs or alcohol, which I have done it, many of us have done it, because it's the easiest for you, but really try and be present with what you're feeling and try to figure out why it is that you're overthinking about this, what are you, is, what, what are you feeling insecure about, what are you feeling unsafe about, and once you get to the bottom of that, you're able to come to terms with that's happening. What's your uh, dissertation on? Um, so I'm analyzing the sort of marketing that exists on TikTok and I'm doing a quantitative study on how TikTok affects uh, streams from Spotify. Once I finished school, high school, I went into to study uh, complementary therapy. So I'm a qualified complementary therapist and Reiki master. Um, so I've always been very interested in self-development and how can I be the master of my own life? How can I control and be authentic to what's happening in here which for a lot of the time could be like wild enough and crazy enough and uncontrollable enough to then have to deal with the outside world as well so it's for me it was all about figuring out how to be myself and um, and so through the complementary therapies world and uh, I'm studying psychology and family therapy as well at university. Through all of this, when lockdown hit, I was just like, right, okay, what am I doing? <laughs> as many of us probably were. And uh, I discovered what a life coach was and it felt very natural to me to go down that route as I'm already questioning myself and questioning how I'm feeling and where things come from. So my aim is to be able to help other women in this discovery, this self-discovery and self-mastery as well. I think politically we need to do more work. I think we need to be more kind. Um, I think there was elements of kindness demonstrated in the pandemic, but it's soon forgotten. Um, when you look at England's loss in the football, you see how nasty and vitriolic people can soon become. Um, so I think we have to remind ourselves to, to care for others more. Uh, well. I hear we're heading towards independence, perhaps, in the near future, which I'm quite hopeful for, but I don't know how it'll go with us being split up from the European Union now and all that stuff. Can I ask where you think morality comes from? I think it's a social norm. Um, culturally, you get it from your uh, heritage, your family, all that kind of stuff. Um, I don't know, it's kind of... Uh, heading towards the path of like a religion, religious or spiritual kind of line of questioning on this matter. Do you do you believe in God? Um, not personally, no. But uh, I do respect people's spirituality in the sense that I believe everybody should have the opportunity to practice any sort of religion that they want or get any uh, cultural morality that they think uh, suits their life. I mean, coming to this country, even if I wasn't aware of how huge a step that was and how huge a change that was in my life, because again, I was only a child, I would say that was probably one of the biggest. I wouldn't be able to be here, obviously. If I wasn't here, I wouldn't be here. <laughs> but um, I would say that was a very, very key point in my life. I do think that in the next 50 to 100 years, um, the US will be the main source of entertainment abroad. The, the US, sorry? Won't be the main source of entertainment abroad anymore. I think it's kind of on the decline at the moment. What do you, what do you think would uh, 
what do you think would replace it? More, more cultural uh, output from China or South Korea, something like that. South Korea is on the rise, and I think China no! is starting to get there as well. Is there ever a time in your life where you've been the most scared? 